Welcome to the EKG Guy. My name is Dr. Anthony Kashu. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Now, either you're coming back for another case, which is awesome, or it's your first time. Either way, so glad you could join us today. Um, now, we're going to be doing the cases right from our free practice uh, site where you can have registered for free. So uh, many of you are already on it, but if not, this is uh, the site right here, practice.ekgguy.com. So simply go there. You could register for free, get started, and uh, we'll get through this case. Now, I know there's many of you, and it's always amazing to see those that continue to follow us. Follow us on Facebook. There's now over you know, 1.3 million of you. So uh, truly a blessing. Never thought this would happen. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in the case. So here we have an ECG. Uh, from a 39-year-old male with a recent syncopal episode, okay? So first, notice here the regular atrial ventricular activity. Both were actually at a rate of 69 beats per minute, okay? And we'll see how to show that and find that. And they have a consistent AV conduction. There's no drop beats that we see here, okay? So every P wave is conducted uh, through to the ventricles. Now, the sinus rhythm uh, is actually present here, and that's evidenced by the normal P wave axis, where we see upright P waves in lead two, we see inverted P waves in lead AVR, and we will, so if you look here, so here's lead two, so notice these upright P waves, and then AVR, okay, uh, we see that there, uh, and if you look at lead two down here, if you were to measure out all these P to P intervals, you'd see they were normal. The P wave morphology throughout this rhythm strip of lead two also is normal, okay? So if you look throughout all these P waves, and if we find the rate, the atrial and ventricular rate should match up, and by doing this, knowing it's a regular rhythm, from beginning all the way to the end of this uh, 12 lead ECG, which is, this one is 10 seconds times six, is 60 seconds, which is equal to one minute. And so when we find the atrial rate, and the atrial rate is going to be equal to the number of P waves times, which is atrial activity, times six, and that's gonna give us an approximate of the rate in beats per minute. Now we said the computer gave us 69 beats per minute. Let's see what we get here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay, so 11 times six is 66. So a normal range, normal access. This is in fact uh, a sinus rhythm or in fact normal sinus rhythm given the atrial rate. So normal sinus rhythm is present based on the P wave axis, the constant P wave morphology, the normal uh, regular P to P intervals and the atrial rate within normal limits for this 39 year old male. Now the intervals are also normal. Okay, so if the PR intervals appears normal, the QRS interval uh, also appears to be uh, within normal limits. Uh, and we see that the QT interval also appears normal. Now, the mean QRS axis and the T wave axis were both actually positive 63 degrees. And this is within normal limits and in relation to each other. Normally, we want them to be within a normal limit. Uh, and those are certainly here. So. Uh, that's the case. So again, finding access, here's lead one, here's lead AVF, okay? Here's AVF is mostly positive. We head towards it and I mean lead one and then AVF also positive, so also heading towards that. So this is our normal access range. So that alone is that, just a quick review. Now the most striking finding on this ECG that you probably noted is that pseudo right bundle branch block pattern, okay? And that's in the right precordial leads, V1 and V2. And there is J point elevation more than two millimeters with these cove, these concave downward ST T wave segments uh, with T wave inversion in both leads V1 and V2. And this is representative of type one Brugada pattern. And this is the only diagnostic pattern of Brugada for Brugada syndrome, especially when we see in the right context here, this patient with this recent syncopal episode. Okay, so the findings here, we'll maybe just clear this. So if you look at V1 and V2, we see this R, S, R prime, and this is actually a pseudo right bundle branch block pattern. The beta angle, which we won't get into here, is wider. Um, you see what you have this ST segment that is essentially a uh, cove down sloping and it has these inverted T waves that we see there. So this pattern is consistent with a type one Brugada pattern. 
okay? And this pattern alone is diagnostic for Brugada syndrome. Now, if you had a type two, which is the other pattern, there used to be three types, now they've classified it down into two types. Type two, you need a little more uh, context to fulfill the syndrome, okay? So uh, type one, you wanna make sure you diagnose that, as well as the sinus rhythm, okay? And that was a normal sinus rhythm. So those are the two main diagnoses uh, from this ECG that you don't wanna uh, miss. And again, think about this, this 39 year old male, perhaps otherwise healthy with this recent syncable episode, you don't wanna miss this. Brugada syndrome is commonly associated with a genetic mutation, the SCN5A gene. This affects sodium channels in the myocytes cell membrane. And so identification of these Brugada ECG patterns as well as evaluation of the patient's clinical and family history are critical for making the, the diagnosis as these patients are at risk for life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias and even sudden cardiac death while they may otherwise appear healthy and normal, okay? So those are the two findings that you wanna get sinus rhythm in type one Brugada pattern or in this case, the syndrome, okay? So Brugada syndrome uh, based on that. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. I hope you found that case helpful. You learned something and took something away that you can use to benefit the patients you care for or even teach it to some of your students. Again, thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't registered, register for free at practice.ekgguide.com or follow us on Facebook uh, and stay in touch.